All right, uh, here we are back, uh, still at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. Again, I'm Justin Kearns. I'm with the Winchester Frederick Tourism Office, and you are? Perry Matthews. I'm the Director of Gardens at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. All right, so we have done a nice long walk through actually a whole bunch of We've fascinating done, done about areas half here. The garden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, and here we are. We're continuing on. So here we are. We're sort of actually, if you were a guest of the family uh, that lived here previously, this is where you would have entered main gate here at 801 Amherst Street. You would have come up the driveway here and go up to the house. So this is actually how you would have seen the house. Okay. Of course, very noisy right now. We have right. trucks, helicopters, <laughs> everything going by. <laughs> and a um, goose to top them off. And um, of course, the, we're standing on a bridge that crosses over Town Run. And if you look up uh, at the far end, there's a stone wall up there. That's where the headwaters of Town Run starts. That's where Town Run begins. Okay. And it flows through the property and down right. into Winchester. Okay. Um, we also have another spring house here, and then of course across the street is the um, city spring house. So there's a lot of sources right. of water for here. This is why Glen Burnie was built here, because this is where the water was. Okay. So. Um, and that used to be called Water Street. Yes, ma'am? That, I'm not sure on you. That's all that you <laughs> I thought that's what that was. Could I'm, be. I'm pretty sure that used to be called Water Street. I could be wrong. Let me know if I was wrong. I'm sure somebody will. I'm sure so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... Uh, one of the newer gardens, we've actually installed this garden. It's a long, linear garden. Um, because the home and the garden, the formal gardens that you see when we walk around, most of the gardens are developed between 1960 and 1990. Um, but this garden, this was really just a lawn area on the far side of the, of the town run from the house. And, um, but we wanted to bring attention to the fact that the headwaters were here. And because the gardens were really developed by um, Julian Glass, who did not live here year-round, the gardens were really designed as more of a summer retreat garden, so we didn't have a lot of early spring flowering plants. So this garden is the spring garden for both reasons, the spring that's at the end of the garden plus the spring flowering plants that we have loaded up in here. Gotcha. So this is a garden that, that you want to be here during the springtime. Um, and we've had to learn a little bit along the way because of the water wave. We're in the floodplain whenever we have heavy rains. Everything from the hospital over floods through here. So this whole garden could be underwater at different times of the year. So we've had to learn how to adjust how we plant and everything. But right now at this end of the garden, we have a lot of daffodils that are just past their prime right now. But you can see some of the hyacinths that are uh, also been blooming in the spring. And uh, by summertime, all this is just lawn. You don't even see any remnants of the daffodils. And we just mow. Hmm. Um, but then we have uh, some nice plant flowering plants all along through here. Um, on the little berm, you see a lot of the, um, the flocks. Of course, this is a good time of year for flocks. Um, you're starting to see a little bit of, we have a nice resident goose who's gonna greet you. Uh, wow, he's talkative. Is he, uh, is he year round? Year round. Okay. And we used to have Lee, was it Lee Taylor who was, um, uh, here for a long time. He was very fond of geese and he, he had quite a few geese and uh, basically age and attrition has got, uh, we're down to the one. Oh, um, you're the last one. The last okay. one. Um, we've talked about getting some more, but at this point in time, we haven't done anything about it. Okay. Um, so, but we have a lot of little grape hyacinths in here. Um, Siberian squirrel over to here. But, And then um, you can see a few. The, this, the, all this foliage is going to be um, Spanish uh, bluebells that will come up in a little bit. But you have all the golden pacara, um, some hellebores in the back. Oh, yeah. You can see the may apples just starting to pop up. So th this garden goes through phases right now. We're in a very bright one. We'll see a lot of blue in the next probably few weeks because we go through our blue phase. Um, just, um, and then you'll start to see a variety of things. We do have some, well, that's all, that's all uh, dandelions, but we do have some, um, some uh, green and gold in here as well. So we have a lot of um, peonies that are starting to come up and get ready to bloom. So in May, you'll be full of peonies. The quince is finishing blooming. Um, the little blue flowers over here is a spring star flower.
Well, I'll roll you over here on one. This is a plant that's worth pointing out. Unfortunately, no one can smell it on, on this. So it is a beautiful little flower. This is a Korean spice viburnum, and it is incredibly fragrant. Um, now you can, you can catch it in the wind, I think, right mm -hmm. here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it is super, wow. super fragrant. Yes. So it's always a good shrub to have in your garden um, if you want a lot of fragrances, particularly in the springtime. What was it again? Korean, uh, Korean spice bush, I think is what it's called. It's a viburnum, viburnum carlesii. Okay. Do you have any necessarily uh, uh, rare plants? We have. In the a, we, we get some weird and unusual plants. Um, some of them. Um, I don't go out of my way to get. Like, there are some plants that you know you incredibly expensive, but because we're a public garden, and I, I want to be able to have people to enjoy plants and think of plants that they can actually find at home. Matter of fact, a lot of these plants we do often carry in our plant sale. Plant sales normally in May. And we're looking, hopefully this year, and trying to put it online. We haven't really worked. We're working on the, all the logistics of trying to get it online so people could do a curbside pickup of plants. Hopefully that would be awesome. May. So keep an eye out on your so, Facebook page, I guess. Yes. As soon as we work out all the logistics of making it work, um, we'll let everybody know. And here we are coming up to the sort of the upper end. This little pond, um, this is a pond that we dug when we put in this garden. Um, and when we were digging this pond, um, we kept hitting springs. There are three, there is a dozen springs. There's 13 springs in here. So at one point we had four pumps running to pump water out so we could dig a hole to put water back in. And you, there's a, yeah, there's a good you know, sized uh, small mouth bass there. Bass, yeah. uh, and then up here we have um, Sarvis, Amelanchier, a Sarvis berry. Um, oh, okay. So, Always tends to bloom right around sort of that Easter time period for a lot of people. Look at all the fish go there. Oh yeah. We do get some algae bloom. We get a lot of nutrients because every all the neighbors sort of get you. There's a heavy right. fertilizer. All that runoff ends up in this ends area. Ends up in here, right. So, um, We're all downstream from something, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, the sculpture here is of um, Kathy uh, Warner, who is the benefactor. She helped pay for most of this, the installation of this garden. So. Oh, nice. Okay. Kathy Spring Garden. Yes. So, Kathy Perry, yes. So all the irises will start blooming in a few weeks, um, so that'll be a nice another addition. And then we have red buds. Um, of course. A little bit past, let's see, everybody asks, why is it called a red bud when it's sort of this uh, sort of um, pinkish mauveish color, but if you look down at the bottom, you can see where it's red, and when they're really close and tight on the, on the branch, they are really red. So they, the buds are red, so it comes back to its name. It's not a, it's not a red flower, it's red bud. So. And they're edible. I was just going to say, they are edible, mm -hmm. yes. I've actually made a homebrew with red bud buds. They can't take like, like peas, kind of like sweet mm -hmm. peas. Well, they're in the, they're, they're in the pea family, so uh, well, it makes sense. All right. I just learned something. It is a lagoon, just like your feet are. So, this is the headwaters. Ooh, and you can see some, some, some good rainbow trout. This is all wow. stocked. Um, and Make sure the, not to drop the camera. Yes, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> the bubbly there is not because this is an artesian spring or anything like that. That's an aerator for the fish. Oh, okay. So, but headwater starts right here. Uh, we also have the drainage ditch, so it brings more water down. So everything from Whittier Avenue and over from the hospital flows by here. But the spring for Town Ryan starts right here. Wow. Um, and flows out into the pond and downstream. So, the, so in the summertime, that uh, creek bed over there can be dry. Okay. So we have we stocked fish in here. 
Um, you can see a couple of, there's one that's really starting to flow oh, really he's good size. into wow. the light. Um, and we did put more in here because the eagle do, does come and sit in this tree mm -hmm. and also swoops down and that's a big, takes one. That's so a the big smart needle. ones stay low. <laughs> More bluebells. More bluebells and more um, the uh, Solomon seal starting to pop up. This is it's, it's interesting. Those are the plantings over in the water garden are much more mature, so they pop up a little earlier. Hmm. Bigger root systems part of it. Okay. So uh, over here is our greenhouse. We can go in. We're going to go in. And just okay. And, uh, oh, good. And you have growth on the. Mm -hmm. In front of us here in the. Yeah. Good. Now, Not open to the public, can, but you get to go in with us we're today. Going with this is behind <laughs> the scenes. Look, this is, this is the, where the magic happens. This is summer. This is this summer's display coming on. So, um, when we were in the parterre a little while ago, talked about the fact that all those daffodils and tulips will get ripped out. Um, a lot of these trays through here are going to end up in the parterre this summer. So um, this is all of Rebecca right here. Let's see what else we have. We also have some vegetables. So this is a salvia. So this is all, and it's, it's labeled for Joel, who is our gardener. That means it's his for the parterre. So um, wow. all this is going to be in the parterre. All that will be in the parterre. Probably some of the stuff over there as well. This looks like there's more vegetables and stuff, or maybe some of the stuff for pots. We'll go in the parterre that you can see some coleus. That'll be for pot displays. Let's see what this one is. Alyssum. So that will also be in the edge of the parterre. Um, so we start everything from seed in here, usually in late February, early March, depending on the growing, how long it takes for things to get to mature size, because we target date mid-May. Um, and... Um, and then we start growing stuff. So I think she's just started all her tomatoes and, and peppers for the vegetable garden. We've done a lot of the early starts of, of kale and stuff. Um, we also have worked with James Wood High School and they did a lot of stuff for us before school was closed down. So we actually right. able to recover the plants that they started and get them oh, out, cool. planted out. So that was really nice. All right. So. Do you have a lot of volunteers that help you out? Or? Um, we have well some, but we don't. We, of course, right now with us being closed, we cannot let the volunteers come in. So they're, they're right. really disappointed about it. But see, like this is a lot of the stuff that the high school kids started for us in the vegetable garden. Oh, cool. And, okay. Uh, so we'll walk around. Well, if they're watching, here's your uh, hard work. Actually, let's right walk here. this way. We'll go through the. Um, a lot of stuff growing. So. Stuff low, the Brunera is that false forget-me-not, just like we saw in the water garden. And then starting getting ready to bloom, you can see all the little Carolina jasmine. Oh, yeah. So give us about a week, maybe two. This will be covered in yellow flowers. I will have to come back so, in a week or two. And, uh, <laughs> and at least just walk down yes. through here. So. Um, I'm so excited that there's growth back on here again. Mm -hmm. This was bare for a little while. Well, what it was is there originally were trees here. And... Um, so the original pleached alle of trees was all crab apples. The crab apples are a fast growing tree, so they gave us that little tunnel of trees very quickly. Um, but they also are short lived, which means they only average about 50 years in the lifespan for an individual. There was 20 trees in this little alle, and they had they've been packed in really tightly. They had been grown together, interwoven in the branches, so it created this fabulous tunnel that everybody loved. Um, but the only thing that they were supported by was T-post and rebar. And um, so that was a tetanus shot waiting to happen. Mm. And um, we had lost, I think, probably about 12 plus of the crab apples. So the alley was starting to fall apart just because of the age of the trees. So we decided to rip the rampandate off all at once and take down all the trees and take out all the T-posts. And then we commissioned um, the special frame to be put in 
So it is um, put in and it took a while and then we, instead of getting the um, crab apples, which we knew would take many years to get to the size that everybody likes, we decided to go for a vine. Uh, so this is Carolina Jasmine. And um, so it's, an, it's a southeastern native. It's semi-evergreen, so in the winter this all bronzes out, but it's starting to green back up again. And in a couple of years, this will be a solid tunnel of, of vine. Nice. And you'll see a little bit out between the, the gaps in the, on the sides. And, uh, and then every spring, they'll just the be The smell is going to be almost mm -hmm. overwhelmingly Well, what you're wonderful. really smelling is the viburnum over there. Right, but the, so, the jasmine is going to be... Yeah. Well, it's not. It's Carolina jasmine, so it's not a strong. Oh, fragrance. it's not as okay. not the not the jasmine that you think of when they talk about jasmine fragrances and things like that. So it's a different. Okay. Carolina jessamine is what a lot of people also. Call. Oh, okay. So it'll be just right. Okay. So work in progress, this, the uh, vegetable garden here, um, it's very early time of year, so we've gotten the, some of the kales and cabbages out. I see your rows, um, okay. And um, we're getting, um, they're getting ready to put in some peas over here, they just did some fencing today. Um, and so this is a little early in the season for a lot of stuff, we would hope to have a few more things out, but everything sort of changed us up, and as you can see, we kind of leave some things out this time since we're closed. Right. It's, it's like everybody else is wearing sweatpants to work. Right. We're actually just sort of leaving our clutter everywhere now. So eventually we'll get... Oh, I didn't want to see you. Let's go see if there's any... Where are starting to come up? Strawberries? These are strawberries that are flowering. And then mixed into it, you can see asparagus. Hey, there's an asparagus hidden down in there. <laughs> so there's some more asparagus right here starting to come out. Yep. So we will harvest some of it. And then it'll grow up and be mature, and it'll get yeah, this feathery foliage over the top of the strawberries and give them a little bit of shade in the hot of the summer. Very nice. Um, these are little tiny uh, strawberries, so super sweet. The structure is closed right now, obviously, but uh, there's no point in us opening it up. I've uh, seen a lot of wedding pictures taken here. A lot here. of wedding pictures taken in here. One of my favorite little spots back here, though, is this little tiny hidden garden. I've never been back here. And um, so we huh. have a few things starting to pop out. We planted in a few little um, things. So you can see some Solomon seal starting to bloom over there, but there is a tiny little trillium just blooming right here. Um, Another one popping up there and there. We just planted those in a few weeks ago, actually. Uh, we got some bare root uh, natives. This is another little trillium called Cuni Trillium cuneatum, and it's going to be a sessile trillium. It'll have a brown flower. Um, so those are just getting ready to pop. There's some ginger. I don't know if the ginger's got any flowers. <laughs> no, it's a little too early for the flowers. Tucked in here. I didn't know this was here. Yep. And of course, the, the, all the brick was laid around the roots of the um, of the cherry and the, the hackberry. Cleaning projects. Don't pay attention. Right. <laughs> cemetery for the wood family and um, wood glass family so um, you can uh, grave markers for Robert Wood the man who built the house down there in the 1790s um, and then children and grandchildren and various other people they intermarried with the glass family out in Frederick County which is where Rose Hill is now um, which is why Rose Hill is part of our, our property and uh, so as we like to say wood turned into glass um, <laughs> And so family members are buried here. Um, this cemetery, if you look, you can see, you can see the wall. There is like a seam right down the middle yeah. horizontally. 
the original wall was only at that bottom part and then that was added above in the 1970s. Um, so they enclosed it just a little bit more. Right. And I have been told, I don't know accuracy of some of these stories, but all these markers have been rearranged. So we don't know okay. where actually all the graves are right this minute. Okay. But the fun one, I'm over here. Um, this is a little marker, a little lamb. It's off to the side. It's not with the rest of the family because this is one of the farm dogs named Punky. So it was a oh. marker for Punky. There's Punky right there on the 1968. Mm -hmm. And then we're rolled back around to where we started in the Grand Ballet. We're all the way back around. So you can see from here, it's not quite as, as impressive as the other end, but you get a nice light this way. You really do see the colors. That is beautiful. All right. Well, that was a grand tour. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see if we might or might not be able to take a look over at the, the okay. new trails. We might have, might be able to, to do it real quickly and okay. uh, do a, a quick little look. Um, yeah. All right. So hopefully we'll see you right back very shortly.